Hello everyone. In this lesson I want to take a look at SQL Server uh, Configuration Manager, uh, which is where you go to stop the server or start the server and also do its network configuration. Let's so actually take a look at it and make some changes to it. So I'm going to go down to SQL Server 2019 and choose SQL Server 2019 Configuration Manager. This is an administrative interface, therefore it requires that you do say yes here. If you're not logged in as an administrator for SQL Server, you will be asked for a username and password, and potentially a domain name if you're in a domain environment. So the first note here shows our actual instances that are running. I only have one instance of SQL Server, and of course the browser is SQL Server agent. Here we can actually stop, pause, restart these services. We don't have any 32-bit installations of SQL Server running, so this is blank. Um, and uh, this is for clients that might be 32-bit that are connecting. And you can look at the client protocols, uh, what you should do with them. We do have server network configuration, and if you expand it and double-click this, you can see that right now shared memory is enabled, but named pipes and TCP IP are disabled. If I had something connecting over the network using uh, Windows SMB, a server message block, which is basically name pipes, uh, then it will be blocked and you would be scratching your head what, what's going on. If somebody was trying to connect over TCP IP over an IP address uh, or you know using a DNS name over the network, they would also be blocked because the server is not accepting those right now. Furthermore, for the client end, we need to enable those products as well. Uh, so I'm going to go into in the server one for the time being and double click name pipes and choose yes and choose OK. It does tell me that the server needs to be stopped and restarted, which is fine. TCP app is a little bit more comp complicated. I am going to say yes to it. But I look at the IP addresses right here, and these are generally an, uh, not enabled. It says for the IP version 6 of this address, do you want to enable it? Yes, I do. For the IP version 4, uh, I've already enabled it, but it was no initially, but you would have to say yes. For the loopback address for IP version 6, I'm going to say yes. And for the loopback address for IP version 4, I'm going to say a yes. And notice the port is 1433. I'm going to click OK and OK to the warning. So the client protocol is the same way. I'm going to allow clients that are coming over name pipes. I will accept those connections. And I will also accept, uh, well, I'm sorry, that was TCP IP. I'm going to accept clients that are coming in over named pipes as well. Now that I've done all of this, I can go to my SQL Server services, and I will select each of these, and I will go ahead and restart each one to make sure that everything is good to go. This is important because in a later lesson, uh, we will attempt to connect to our server from a different computer. And I want you to know that it will work because we have done these changes right here. Uh, if we don't, we'll get some strange error messages, and then you have to go figure out why those error messages are there. And that's the reason, because uh, you're not allowing connections to come in. Finally, keep in mind that uh, this is, of course, just a desktop machine right now, but a SQL Server usually runs on a server. One thing that you have to keep in mind is that when a connection comes in from the outside, it's going to go through Windows Firewall. So I need to allow that port to come in. So I'm going to go to Windows Firewall and um, uh, bring it up here. And for inbound rules, I am going to go ahead and create a new rule. It will be, I will do it based on a port, click next, and it is TCP. The specific local port is 1433 that SQL Server is listening on. I will allow the connection, and I will allow it to, whether it's my domain, is a private connection, like coming out over, uh, you know, a local home connection, or if it's coming from the internet. I'm going to call this SQL Server, and choose finish. So this is now part of my firewall, Windows firewall, which is great, which means that now from the outside, if somebody tries to connect to this, that port will be allowed 
to come into the server and make connections. If you don't do this and you're running SQL Server, then pretty much uh, no connections will be permitted. Uh, I'm not saying that this must be done for every instance, of course. In many instances, SQL Server is the backend database, so there's a front-end application that accepts all the connections and then it makes a connection to SQL Server. So there is no need for outside clients to connect directly to SQL Server. But I just wanted you to know that this is something that you may have to do on a firewall if you have connectivity problems. That's it for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for being a great audience. As always, please share your knowledge with others. And if you're enjoying these videos, please share them with your loved ones and friends.